This study came out re very recently about fasting or, or time-restricted eating, that form of fasting where it's fasting within a 24-hour window. So I use the term time-restricted eating to refer to that, when, you, when you're changing the eating window within a 24-hour window, rather than like alternate day or, or you know, because people can do a 1-1 one, one fasting where they eat one day, fast another day, or they do a 5-2. Let, let's call that intermittent fasting where it's a full day or so, and then time-restricted eating when it's within one day. Journal, the Journal of the American Medical Association, one of the preeminent biomedical journals. But the title of this one that was just published, Effects of Time-Restricted Eating on Weight Loss and Other Metabolic Parameters in Women and Men with Overweight and Obesity. One of the strengths of this study, and they are, they are right to highlight this, is that it was a randomized clinical study. So that there's a power there because in randomizing it, you're, you're hopefully eliminating uh, or, or accounting for some of the inherent differences that people may, well, that, that we all have. We're, that's the problem with studying humans, why so many of us rely on, on rodent models. I can have a whole colony of mice that are basically genetically identical and are going to respond to the diets and everything we do identically. In humans, of course, we're, we have such a variety. So it was a randomized trial, and, and it was fairly big where they, were, they had well over 100 people included in the study. That's really good for a human study. One concern I had from the get-go with the... So, so briefly, this study finds basically no significant improvements with the time-restricted eating, to, just to kind of cut to the, cut to the um, outcomes or the results. They found that there was a significant reduction in weight in the time-restricted eating group, but also a significant reduction in lean mass. In fact, it was a shocking uh, amount. I think 65% of the weight lost was considered from lean mass. And that, I say shocking because it is a very high degree of lean mass loss. It also is a lean mass loss that is not seen in any other study of, of fasting, to my knowledge. So that was a bit of an, uh, a shocking finding and a bit of an anomaly. Now, some people I've seen in social media are citing that one finding as reason to avoid time-restricted eating because they want to get big with muscle mass gains or they want to maintain muscle mass gains. I would simply try to alleviate that concern by saying that is not a finding seen in other studies. So the degree to which that is, is real, and I'm not accusing the, the authors of this manuscript in any way of dishonesty. No, it could just be an artifact. It's something that's come up and it's just an anomaly. Or there were a couple people that had a very high response and the rest didn't at all. So whether that's a real worry or not, um, I don't think it is just because it's not been shown in other studies, but that's one of the key takeaways from this sort of negative study, if we want to call it that. Um, there was a significant body mass reduction, but it was not because of a fat loss. Based on how they measured this, it was because of a lean, a lean mass loss.